Alright, what's going on with y'all, man? It's your boy Dan because the news and who we got right here. Got your boy Skipper. Flipper. Skipper. Skipper. Not Skipper the Flipper. This is it's just Skipper, but I mean goddamn, they call me Flipper. <laughs> goddamn, I got a lot of aliases that I didn't I didn't work for now. Oh so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah for a, real. A couple different names. But for you can call me Skip. Yeah. Nah for real though. So yeah, man. I just wanna get to know about you, man. Get to know about your life, your music, everything like that, man, since we down here, man. So tell me about yourself, man. Um, I'm from Sula. Sula. I, I grew up right off Allentown, uh, not too far from the mountain. Mm -hmm. Uh, went to school with all the rappers that's rapping right now. Went to right. Rise and went to Crossman. So, um, yeah, all those mutual friends and shit. We, mm -hmm. all, we all grew up in the same area. Right. I just stay out of the way for real. Right, right, right. Fact. So. You know, uh, you know, it's the thing about Sula, man. You know what I'm saying? It's not one of you know how like people be like, oh, Meezy, Merlin, ass, and it. You don't really get that about Sula, man. Sula a melting pot. So yeah. like, it's like you gonna get, you gonna have Meezy and Sula, but you also might find some Southside niggas in Sula. You might find some Uptown niggas in Sula because Sula right next to the city. Right. It's, it ain't nothing but two exits off the Parkway. So like. It's a melting pot. You don't know who you might run into yeah. in Sula. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, they. I, I interviewed some dudes from around Bradford Place uh, not too long ago. Uh, they was like the origins of the the the, the term Southeast Maryland started mm -hmm. in Sula. They like Sula. I, I can like, say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah Sula. Sula, Sula, Sula like the Southeast of Maryland. Yeah, they, and like Landover, like the uptown area. Of Maryland. Yeah, like Northeast uptown yeah, part of Maryland. Yeah. But it's like they call it. They say the term Southeast Maryland came from like Sula and Temple Hills, Oxon Hill area because of how, because like how close it was the city was, and a lot of people moved from the city to Maryland. You know well, what I'm saying? Well, I would say this: Temple Hills and Oxon Hill wasn't really turned when I was younger. Right. It was Saint Barnabas was turned. Uh, Forestville was turned. Walker Mill was turned, but like the oxen, that was kind of like the the younger generation kind of turned that. Yeah. They were, I mean, you had Glass Manor. And I mean, stuff, yeah. Glass, but that's damn, that's DC to me for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, and I don't, yeah, I don't really consider that oxen here. Technically, it is, but that's why I said St. Bonham's. Yeah, All, yeah everything St. Bonham's, Wheeler, everything right there. Yeah, but uh, Oxen Hill wasn't really. When I was growing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah facts. I mean, but Suitland was like a different jungle. Like, Suitland wasn't really a jungle for real to me. To other people it might have been. Yeah. Suitland was just like, I feel like you just got to be yourself at all times in mm -hmm. Suitland. Because that's, that's what we going to do. We're going to expose you for who you are. So if you in Suitland and you portraying to be something you not, then you might have issues. But if you a nigga like me and you just being yourself, regardless of who you is, then fuck with you. Like, yeah. Ain't, 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 I ain't no bullies in here. Ain't no bullies out here for real. Mm -hmm. Nah, fast for real. Yeah, fast, 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 man. So tell me your, uh, your your life story, man. Like, how did you grow up, man? Did you grow up both parents, one mother, one or one father? I or started story? off living with my mother. Mm -hmm. I'm just like from Virginia on the low. <laughs> <laughs> I was living with my mother till I was like eight, nine. Mm -hmm. I was born in Maryland. My mother, father broke up. Boom. I broke up when I was like three, and I moved to VA. I lived from in VA from like three to nine, three to ten. Mm. Then I moved back to Maryland, been out here since. So uh, my parents split apart, and I've lived in both households. Right. So I can I can vouch for both, like how the experiences. I, mean, I ain't gonna say I had a bad upbringing. I ain't gonna say I had the best upbringing, but my parents did their job. Yeah. They did their job. Right? Okay. So that's 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 the best way to put it. Right, right, right. It um, wasn't perfect, but it was. I mean. It breeded me to what I am now. My father was a musician, mm -hmm. so I grew up in a household full of mm -hmm. ASR tens and Motif classics. Really? Mm -hmm. Yes. My father, my father, playing the go-go band since the early '90s. He produced for. Uh, man, I ain't gonna put his business out there. Right. I mean, you can't tell him what band he played for. I mean, he didn't play for all any band you could think of. He didn't probably play for. Like mm -hmm. I didn't, he didn't, he didn't key as a known keyboard player. So my father didn't play for a lot of bands and. He didn't also produce for some industry artists, so right. I grew up in a household full of musical equipment. Right. So I, that, I'm grateful for that more than anything. I mean, yeah, I went through shit, but why well, talk about that when I was I was given my gift since youth. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm cool with that. Yeah, if I, yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. If you if you had a good upbringing, I can respect it. If you had a bad, like you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, that's what I was known for though. Like when I was a kid, all a lot of the rappers that you hear now. 
these was the niggas that was playing San Andreas with me in the house, like kick, like my crib was that crib, like mm -hmm. where everybody come over with, kick it, chill, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. My house was the spot y'all like, so, right. like a lot of them back then was watching me record 13, 14 years old, like I've been kinda doing music for me, I've never done nothing else right. but music, so they already known, I was already known for that. Right. I was the only house niggas could come to to record music and right, had right. that type of equipment. Uh huh. Before, you know what I'm saying, sound check and all that type yeah. of shit. Yeah. So. Yeah, facts, 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 facts. Nah, for real. That that's that's definitely a blessing right there on the though, man. Right there. So, yeah, man. So let's take you right here, man. What uh, you say it was one of the beginnings of your uh your your music journey was your father. What made you want to pursue music for yourself? The platform. Mm -hmm. Um, I felt like uh, I feel like artists not advocating for the right people. We not fighting for the right shit right now. Yeah. And we kind of, you know what I'm saying. So, um, can you elaborate on that? Uh, I feel like as as artists, we got the advantage because we get to travel and we get to experience things that our peers might not ever get to experience. So it's our job to educate these people on how to do these things as well. And I don't think we do that well enough. I don't think we, we, we coming back and really installing the proper information into these people. All we installing in them is what it's supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. We ain't installing in them the work you gotta do, the business moves you gotta make, the LLCs you gotta set up so that your money is your money. Right. A lot of people make money, but it ain't their money. Right. And that be the that's really the big difference in your bag is is the money you making your money, or is that a percentage of something else that's a whole? So that's just what I think that we gotta do as a whole is just advocate more for the people that less fortunate. Mm -hmm. That's why we fortunate. So and we not doing that right now. We stunning throwing that shit in their face, buying chains and shit. Yeah. So. Mm hmm. That's right. That's that's something you brought up right there. You know what I'm saying? You think a lot of rappers out here just like rap just to look, you know, popular or look sweet. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna down rappers out here. I'm gonna say this. I think I think they in pain. Mm -hmm. I think they hurt. Really? That's that's yeah, deep, bro. I think they hurt. Like when I when I see the shit that I see in my city, I don't even talk bad. Like I don't even talk bad about because I'm still. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I get it. And in my eyes, I be like, damn, he hurt. He in pain. He ain't had nobody to talk to about that before he made that decision. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So that's what I be like. We gotta advocate more. We gotta create more resources. We gotta have youth outreach centers. We gotta have therapists. I think everybody need therapy at some point. And that's a, that's that's a definitely a good spin off right there, man. You know what I'm saying? I think everybody need therapy in their life. So I don't think these niggas wrong. I don't think they stupid. I don't think they none of that. Yeah. I think they hurt, bro. And everybody entitled to their emotions. Mm -hmm. You just gotta deal with your emotions. You can't yeah. move off your emotions. Right. And I know we felt bad. We said we don't want to get to talk too much about, uh, you know, beef stuff like that. But you think that's the reason, right? You you think that's the reason why, like, a lot of the, the like, it's like a lot of today we got a lot of the, uh, quote unquote, what they call the free card music out right now. Like, a lot of that type of music out instead of, like, quality music. Like, I mean, I, I, I don't have an issue with the sound. It's more so of the message. You know what I'm saying? So do you think that's probably the reason why right there? Like, you just like how you broke it down right yeah, there? Yeah, niggas, hurt. you got to think. You ever lost you you ever lost somebody before? Yeah. All right. So like, when you lose somebody, like that's pain you can't get rid of. Right. That's that's a forever scar. Mm -hmm. So it's like, like I said, we don't got therapists. We don't got this shit in the hood to know how to deal with those type of emotions. So all we know is I want to make a nigga feel how I feel. Right. You see what I'm saying? So is he wrong for that? Mm -hmm. I'm not. That ain't my. I ain't God. I don't judge nobody. Everybody entitled to their feelings, right. but at the end of the day, once you've done that, now how you feel? Do you feel better or do you feel? You still feel the same. You feel the way. same way. Yeah. Can't call that nigga. You can't go smoke with Jay with your buddy no more. He gone. You still fucked up about it. So it's like, I mean, you just gotta weigh your options out. I ain't gonna tell them nigga how they need to handle situations, but I would say this: making music, incriminating yourself after doing it, ain't smart. You see what I'm saying? I I be around people who really step, and they don't got no social media. They don't even got a Facebook. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, I think that's where the beef come in at, is when the niggas who not that try to portray that. Mm. And then they finally meet a nigga who like that, and 
You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now I gotta show you what this really look like. Yeah. And and then and then it's a sad story, but it's like it's not, cause that's what you asked for. Right. Nah, no, for real. That's facts. But I think it's love in the city, though. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's all hate in the city. I think it's love in the city. I just think we hurt, bro. Mm -hmm. So I question: How you feel about that DMV, uh, the the Fat Trail event, uh, the DMV? Uh, I think that was a great step forward. Right. For the city, and I, I'm glad that he was able to put that together and made it a priority to get it done before the summer was out. I hope that he continues to do it and continue to put DMV artists on it because right. we have promoters here that throw big functions, and our artist isn't headlining, and that's where my beef come in. At. Right. If I'm a beef with anybody, I'm a beef with the promoters. Because right. I didn't seen promoters bring Gucci in time. I didn't seen promoters bring baby, bring you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, fact. I get what but you're you won't put together a five thousand, ten thousand dollar event for your city artists. Right. And then got the nerve to talk about how we not where we supposed to be at is because we not working together. The artists doing the work. In my eyes, the artists doing the work, bro. We doing everything. We promoting ourselves. We got down recording ourselves. We it's getting to the point now where we damn shit shooting our own videos because the cameraman acting like they got more money than us. Mm -hmm. Like we doing the work. We need the people around us to realize what the work being done for. Somebody got to somebody got kicked that door in. Right, I agree. Who I really have... kicked it in? Besides, mm -hmm. Trail Valle, IDK, Brent. Corday, mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Who really kicked it in in the music industry, and who really not only kicked it in but kept the door swinging? Like a lot of niggas kicked the door and closed it behind them. Mm -hmm. So that's what my beef is. It's with yeah. That niggas not niggas not on the same page for real. Yeah, facts. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That, that. I highly agree with that. I highly agree with that right there. You see what I'm saying? That's yeah. why I want to lock in with a. Mm -hmm. I just rather lock in with a blogger and talk about. Now, it. I uh I want to play devil's advocate because I'm a promoter too. All right, for sure. So I do events as well, right? And I've done events where I've lost thousands of dollars trying to invest myself in DMV rappers. You know what I'm saying? That don't promote. They think they're famous, famous. So they think that my promotion alone is gonna, you know, of course I'm a promoter, so of course I'm gonna promote the event. Let me ask you this, yeah. what do you consider promotion? What you mean? Like what was you doing that was promoting it? Well, I come from the go-go, so I do go-go events too, so it's in the streets, it's on the internet, so it's basically word advertising, mouth. word of mouth, promotion. text messages, like I do, I do it all. I have a right. text blast of like 11,000 people. All right, for sure. So for sure. it's like, I'm a real promoter. I don't just like, okay, cause I'm, I have a brand, I could just promote it on, the, on, on Instagram and it's gonna bring everybody out. No, you know what I'm saying? I've done showcases, I've done events, I've tried to mix the culture, I tried to bring Gogo -Go with the rap all together, lost thousands doing it, you know what I'm saying? It's no knock to them, it's no knock to them and shit, but I'm just saying like, you have some rappers, they think the internet is real life, you know what I'm saying? Whereas, oh, yeah. yeah, they think oh, the internet, yeah. so okay, I'm doing a million, <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm doing a million on YouTube, I'm and doing can't pull hundreds of to a store. Can't and bring you it. know what's so funny? I'm the complete opposite. Like. Fuck Instagram. I could really have three, four hundred niggas in one area right. and we all know each other. We all vibe. We all. So it's like, but to answer your question, this is what I would say. Right. Any artist that don't promote himself don't want to be an artist. Really? Let's start with that. Facts. It don't matter Agreed. whether he was doing something with a promoter or not. Yeah. Two, as the promoter, if you had already set the standard, like, hey, this is what I need you to do, because that's really what the problem be. Mm -hmm. Like, niggas ain't say that up front. If you need me to promote the show and do the show, we got to know that. Right. Because in our eyes, a lot of artists don't know the music industry. Right. We think that you just supposed to have your name on there and the, and the fans going to come in. They don't understand the footwork. They don't understand putting up the street flyers. They don't yeah. understand. I do. You see what I'm saying? But a lot of artists don't understand that. So if you had held that standard and they just carried the situation, then fuck it. They shouldn't even have been on the show. Right. I, I, could, I could get why a promoter would be mad yeah. at that. So it's like when you bring a little baby in, yeah, he calls a lot more. You know what I'm saying? See, me personally, if I had money to book a little baby, I probably would book him and put a DV robber on there. You know what I'm saying? But Baby gonna book himself. Yeah. Baby know, baby know, baby already know what he can do. Right. And each city, By himself. he already know his algorithm. Yeah. Baby can book himself. And just like he got that statistics as promoters, 
Y'all should have that information for all DMV artists. Right. Like, I agree. We, so I, I ain't never seen, like, I don't think I've seen too many rappers with their own, like, I've seen somebody, they might have, like, some merch, mm -hmm. but you have your own clothing brand, like, a store and everything. Oh, let's clarify real quick. I'm not the owner mm -hmm. of this brand. Mm -hmm. I'm a brand ambassador. Right. So I just brand it with Right, right, right. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, you okay. But, um, my man P, uh, he's the owner of this, and, um, he my dog, man. He took me. He, that's a good. That's a good dude, man. Right. He kind of. Uh, he helped me see how the fashion and the music industry kind of like hand in hand. Right. It's either fashion and music or fat or music and sports. All that shit kind of in the same. It's kind of like a different world, it's but but it's connected in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like your your style determines which what, what your artistry can do. Like right. ain't no ain't no bad ass rappers. You got to put that shit on to be a rapper. So right. being in the fashion industry just make you a, a, a more marketable, more mm -hmm. to give you advantages. But shit, man, I found Pete, me and Pete been locked in for like maybe like five, six years. And um, when I had met him, like he had hand painted pieces. He had like one on one collection pieces. And right. I just fell in love with the globe and what it, what he mean, what he, what it stood for, mm -hmm. and what it. What it, you know what I'm saying? Like it just it y'all like changed my perspective on life. It y'all like unified some shit. So once I I just stuck with it, started rolling with him. Eventually, started inviting me to photo shoots and shit. We locked in. You know what I'm saying? But um, this is paradise. We right here, uh, Sycamore Oak. Y'all can come by anytime. Yeah. We open. If y'all don't know, that's right off the K. Right off the K. Right off the K. Right off the K. So we right in the mix. Um. It's a nice little area that they can put together. They got a little food over here. Um, they got all, it's all black owned shops over here. You know what I'm saying? So come over here, support your people. Come put the shit I got on. Y'all want, y'all, they've always asked me where I get my shit from. This is where I get it from. Right here, we got a store now. Come get it. Right. You feel yeah, me? This is, this is nice. Yeah, the clothes look nice, man. Appreciate so, it, man. I, I mean, definitely want to. Yeah, definitely appreciate it, though. What's, uh, what's probably the biggest struggles of being an artist, you know what I'm saying, out here, you would say? Budget. Boom. Budget. It's just as simple as that. It ain't me making the money. That ain't even my problem. I can make the money. I'm a hustling ass nigga. That ain't even the problem. It's budgeting, bro. Like, it's like you gotta really plan this shit out. Like, I see why artists be having this shit done a year in advance. You gotta. It's, it's about time. Mm -hmm. You gotta have the videos coming out right, rolling out with everything. Right when the PR working, right when the billboards come. Like, it's just budgeting, bro. Mm -hmm. Budgeting this shit and juggling life with that. Because, I mean, like, it's, it's it's sad, but in order to make it, you gotta lose yourself in this music shit. Right. Like you gotta you gotta fuck your priorities up. You gotta go get a music video instead of paying for your rent. You gotta do that a couple times, and then you, you to really, and then that's when God gonna hit the switch for you. Like it's like it take a, a, a unmeasurable level of faith right. to do this music shit. If you don't have a big dog or a nigga who gonna invest in yeah. because your money going, it, you gotta spend money, and it ain't even, bro, everything costs, man. Mm. And it just, it's. At first, it was irritating, but when I started spending money, and I started getting a bigger feedback, mm. I, I see why. So at first you was at a budget, and then next me you realize about. At first, brilliant. I didn't want to spend money at all. Right. I felt like shit. I'm a popular nigga. Y'all already know me. This is what I'm doing now. Y'all should automatically support it, right? But that ain't how people work. People got to see you spending money on something before they spend money on something. Mm -hmm. Like, how you ask somebody to buy a $20 CD and you ain't got a $500 video for it? You see what I'm saying? They like, how you, you not spending, you, you want us, you trying to make money off us, but you ain't spending your money. Like, mm -hmm. that's how I started looking at it. So I was like, you know what? From now on, if I drop that shit on it, Niggas got respect. Good. I just seen niggas with trash music drop twenty thousand on a video and it fly. Right. So that's what niggas gonna respect is your investment into yourself. So I think that's the hardest part is just wearing out the doubts, wearing out your priorities because you gonna have to fuck your priorities up to do this shit. Mm -hmm. What's the uh, what's the biggest thing your budget think is most important? Quality or marketing? Well, see, this is what saves me. Right. I'm an audio engineer. Right. I mix and master all yeah. my music. I don't pay for studio time. 
Right. If I do, it's out of respect. And I'm even when I do pay for studio time, I tell the engineer, I, like she didn't, see, they didn't see me do. It, I make the engineer get out the chair. Right. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, what costs the most for me is um, ads, mm. advertising, because um, fuck Instagram and shit like that. Like when you really get them Google services. You wanna be at the top of them search bars and shit like that, that shit costs. Or you wanna goddamn be Times Square, that shit costs. And you wanna open up for uh an industry artist that's coming in your town, that shit costs. Like you just need to have a good five, six thousand on standby. Just for uh, if an opportunity presents itself. Because it's gonna cost and you might be fucked up afterwards, but that could be the that could be it. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like if Drake called me right now and was like, I'm doing features for this amount of money and that's all the money I had in my name, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> nigga, please. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. You see what I'm <laughs> and that's the hardest part because a lot of artists is we stuck in our ways. Mm -hmm. We stuck in. I didn't, yeah. Like, we scared. Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna speak for everybody else. I'm gonna speak for myself. I was scared. I used to be scared. Now I say fuck it. I hop on the flight with a hundred dollars in my pocket. I don't even care because at the end of the day, like, if that might be the trip, mm -hmm. that that might be the trip. That so, trip, that trip might worth be worth a million dollars. Man, I might meet a nigga out there. That nigga might fuck around, goddamn, on the studio. Put it, oh, you rap? I show him a song. Damn, that boy, come on. I already got that vibe. Like I kind of, I kind of let God guide how I move. I don't really, you know what I'm saying. So like, I run into people all the time, bro, right. off the accident, and it just they kind of help me do what I need to do. So mm -hmm. that's that's just the hardest part. Just trusting that process, right. and being patient. Right. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Damn. You know what I'm saying? What you got on the way, man? Or what you already... Flip will drop next week, Friday, September 22nd. September 22nd. And I promise y'all, I'm, I'm never disappointed. My mm -hmm. first... I've only dropped uh, two full projects. Okay. Right? My first project, Skip a Belly, did 300,000. Right. No promo. 300,000, yeah. 300,000 streams. Yeah, that's nice. No music videos. No playlist placements, none of that shit. Just off the, hey y'all, just drop the album, go check it out. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Um, since then, they've been begging me. They've been begging me, and I ain't dropped since then. Yeah. And that was about two years ago. Oh, so you ain't really had no flip, no features or nothing like that either. No right? features on this project. I really don't. The features I want to get, I can't get right now. They even incarcerated or they done passed away or I just ain't in a position to get the features that I want right now with and I'm working towards. It's some it's some people in the city I wanna work with though, for sure. It's a lot of people in the city I wanna work with. It's just that what what, what they got themselves into I can't support because I'm about my money, I'm about business. Right. I don't care about that street shit. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I can't cross my can't cross market street shit with business because you're gonna taint it, you're gonna fuck it up. So, mm -hmm. I, I, so it'd be like crazy. You you, so it'd be like situations. You'd be like, damn, I want to work with him, but he like he, he be making this songs towards these dudes. So I, I, it'd be it like, just be as simple as what come with that. Yeah. I love these niggas' music. These niggas' music is hard as fuck. It's just like what come with that, and I live here. Yeah. Like, I ain't you just wanted to do a song and now you gotta pick a side. I gotta deal with that. I yeah, don't wanna yeah, have to deal with that. Now, if a nigga come to me and we want some money, he like, man, let's just get some money. I don't wanna rap about that. Let's make some shit for the street. Let's make some shit for the club. Let's, make, let's go. Yeah. But I'm not, nah, I'm not supporting that. Cause I can really rap. So I'll fuck around, really walk the track, and then that nigga gonna be really people with me. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. he gonna be really people with me. So, nah, I don't got no features on this project yet. Actually, I do got one feature. I'm tripping. Um, my twin on there with me. We already got about two, three projects out together. My man Trey, he the only feature that I got on there. And um, my man, my my in house producers. Mm -hmm. If features, if producers can be considered features. Okay. Um, yeah, I could. I do. Uh, my brother, um, he produced. He got some uh, tracks on there. And my man Kwan, 
he got some tracks on there that he produced. Well, it's only one other rapper on it, and it's 17 tracks. I ain't never gave these folks this many tracks at one time. Right. So, um, mm -hmm. I feel good about the project. Yeah. Um, so you think this using this project is gonna be like probably the one that's gonna that's gonna put you on a different level? I feel like every project I make could be the one. Right. It's just that you gotta put the money it costs behind a project to make it the one. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm in a better place in life now. Mm -hmm. I could uh do a little bit more. So I feel like this project could definitely get me further. Right. And I got three, four more lined up, right, ready already done coming right behind it so i think this will be my this about to be my run yeah it might not be this project but this about to be my run this right. is the start of it right here for sure yeah this one's gonna make a difference this this going this gonna be the start of it because they ain't they ain't never seen me come this hard before yeah. they ain't never seen me come this trim i trim mm -hmm. the fuck up all the way up head to toe right. on this jump all right so that's it does. Like the sound of that, man. I definitely gotta check this one. I probably gonna go in the car right now check the previous project. Check the, you won't like the previous one because it's not just all spam music. I actually make hip hop. I actually make. I gotta talk about good shit. I talk about good topics. So, um, that previous project, um, you won't like because it's some good content, mm -hmm. some relatable content. You see what I'm saying? Right. This project is strength crank, like no funny. Like right. my head be hurting from. Yeah. <laughs> so this jump, like I can't even. I only listen to it no more because it just got down. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I can't stop. Like, it right. Just, I'm, I feel very confident in this next project for sure. Yeah. And it, I don't sound like nobody from the DMV. Yeah. I don't yeah. sound like nobody from the DMV. If anything, these niggas sound like me, but that's a whole nother interview. <laughs> we can talk about that later. Remember another time, another time, another time. The house they used to be in when we were kids, man. But we gonna talk about that later. That's yeah, 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 man, definitely, definitely, man, definitely, man. So we definitely gonna uh, wrap this up right here. Any last words? Any words of motivations right here? Keep going, man. Keep going. Goddamn, drink water. Yeah, definitely drink. Drink some fucking water, man. Mm -hmm. Straight up. Um, come shop. Come shop. And it ain't gotta be with me. Come shop with your black people. Come shop. You feel me? Definitely. Um, and uh, shit, y'all gonna see me around. And when y'all see me around, I'm gonna be a stranger. Don't come with no fuck shit though. Mm -hmm. Like, cause I don't give up that energy. I'm a pretty cool lady by guy. We can smoke a blunt together. Right. But you know what I'm saying? Speak, say what's up. Tell me what I can do to make me a better person. Tell me what I can do to help the city. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right. And it's all love for real, for real. From mm -hmm. I, I, I'm from Maryland, but I love it all. D.C., Maryland, Virginia, it's all love. Yeah, nah, definitely, man. I definitely appreciate this interview. Definitely, man. Definitely tap in for the new album. What, what's the album called again? Flip, September 22nd. September all 22nd. Distribution all platforms. distributions. Um, I'm going to put together a listening party. I'm going to put some shit together. I'm going to make sure we're we going to be back real soon, man. Yeah, definitely. Definitely appreciate the interview. It's your boy, Dan Villas and News, and we gone.